Man, I've been having so many GTS bikes show up around here lately. Check this one out. So he said it's got a stock Predator 212 with a 28 millimeter carb. And he said it doesn't run right. So it's got the six inch wheels, 40 chain, and it's got a small sprocket on it. Man, this thing should fly. So I'm gonna try to get this thing running right. I either try to rejet that carb or throw another one on it. I think I'm gonna wash this thing before I uh, start working on it. And then another one showed up with a fat tire live axle. Check it out. So what block is this then? That is a, your standard Chinese 212 Predator, not heavy. Okay. Uh, and it's it was bored by Big Belly Racing. The guys there at FLR did the block for me. And it has uh, one of the little JE pistons you can buy that's the like little forge piston, arc rod, arc flywheel, uh, your standard Predator 212 crankshaft, black bomba junior camshaft, um, chromoly push rods, black venom one two ratio rocker arms. Uh, I run, I think it has 40 pound valve springs, but it might have 36. Oh, 40 pound valve springs. I don't wow. remember. It's okay. been a while since I've had the head apart this motor, and I, 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 I've done you know so many engines. Um, but that's fully ported, port match to the intake. That's a big belly. Uh, uh, oh no, that's actually not the big belly. I used to have a big belly billet intake. That's just a regular, like, you know, a uh, little cheap intake manifold. It's port match to it and tap for the, the pulse pump. Uh, NGK uh, coil. Um, you know, pretty simple, basic, but yeah. it, I, I got probably, I bet you I got 2,000 miles on that motor now since I've had, had it. And it's been on like seven different bikes. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Got some miles on it. It still runs awesome. It doesn't smoke or anything like that. And I run it a little bit over full, full in oil just to kind of be nice to it. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't smoke. It fires at first pole. When it's hot outside, if you turn the thing off and try to restart it, you got to be careful. You got to put it on the compression stroke. Oh, we'll, oh like, really? It'll it'll kick back. Hand, and you can see all the dents on the, on the blower housing and the thing whacking back on it. The Max Torque, I've run it with a Premier. Um, I've run it with one of those, uh, what's that other one? The Hillard. Ran it with a Hillard before. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't like the Hillers. They, they're kind of chattery. Okay. When you engage, they're like, they're yeah. really rough. You were saying something about the uh, the fork rake on here? Yeah, so uh, a lot of bikes have what they call scrub angle, and scrub angle is defined by when the tubes are ahead of the pivot point. Yeah. That acts as leverage when the bar bars are turning, and at slow speed, it gives you a better feel like when you're, like if you're slaloming your bike in a parking lot. Yeah. With no yep. scrub angle, it gives it zero leverage on the bars to wobble. So I found and running a gazillion different frames and stuff over the last couple of years since I've been doing it, that running zero scrub angle at high speed gives really good stability. This bike legitimately, you can ride one handed down Route 66 going 60 miles oh, okay, an hour yeah. and pull your phone out and take a picture if you want or take a video. And that was one thing why I really like this bike is I really, I've had like a GTS, a couple of GTSs like this. Yeah. I like got some back alley. I don't know if you've heard of back alley mini bikes, but I like the live axle on this particular bike. Because, yeah, that's nice. So it's a live. Because if we actually ride axle. them at 70 miles an hour, the rear wheel bearings only lasted like for me only a few weeks. I've got the rear wheel bearings on my stock GTS. I would put wheel bearings on that thing like every two weeks. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. You're running 70 all the time. Right. Yeah. Going freeway speed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True. So you're running like, um, what, six inch wheels on here then? I run a six on the front. It's a Doug five inch shifter cart wheel on the back. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, that uses, is cool. You know, like a, like a go-kart style live axle hub on the inside with, you know, keyways and set screws. It's a giant nightmare to work on our service, but yeah, I like once, once you get everything red lock tied in place and you torque the bolts the size you can physically do it, it's been bulletproof. The 28 mil, that's just a 28 PDK, millimeter PWK, PWK. just like what's on your GTS. Yeah. Yep. So you need to run in a pump. Okay. I originally wanted this bike, even though it has a live axle and it like looked kind of racy, I didn't want to run a catch can. I didn't want to run the cylinder tank. I wanted to run the stock gas tank. And even with a pulse pump, the the little like filter thing that's in the stock tank is so restrictive. Eventually, I would probably TIG weld a nice little bung, bung fitting in the stock tank. Yeah. One thing a lot of people don't know is about running the check valve in line with your catch can. Actually, I did on, on that. Yep. Yeah. And what that does is yeah. it allows for that crank pressure, to escape, pressure, but it doesn't yep. allow for 
air to go back in the engine. I, I talked about that on that video on that yep. GTS bike, actually. Yep. The same thing. It's it, it's actually it, and what it does is it'll it, it keeps it from getting extra pressure in the crankcase. Yeah. And it makes them leak less, and it also helps the ring seal. Oh, okay. That's the whole point of this venting from top to the bottom is stabilizing the ring seal at high RPM. Okay. And it also does help the bike the, the engine lubricate the top end because there's a lot of oil flow that goes in that hose at speed when you're on the freeway or you know cruising thing at six thousand RPM above. You look down there, there's so much oil going through that hose, it's crazy. Yeah. Yep. I run always the gold chain on anything you're not riding just in a neighborhood. Yeah. All those other chains, they fly apart. Yeah, they do, actually. And the gold motorcycle chains, they're they're pretty durable. I mean, they'll, they'll just about last forever. This is the that. only bike I got with zero intention of selling. Because I bought gonna... a live axle bike with a hydraulic brake. Yeah. And it was mostly, the frame was mostly all together. I had to, like, this bracket wasn't welded right. Eventually, I'm going to make a one-piece bracket that is, like, you know, kind of pie-shaped that'll go from here to here. A one piece unit that looks really nice that's how gts set it up originally and this is one of their older frames the guys at gts said this frame is like 10 plus years old and it was never assembled i got it with bare metal it it didn't even have seat mount brackets on it oh wow so you just kind of i put the seat mount brackets fabbed it up on, yourself tape, yep um and it didn't even have slots in the motor plate it was just a pl flat plate of steel it's a clean slate yeah it didn't have pegs on it so so gts makes the bike set up for that wheel already i mean lot, yep yep i mean yep they they're, they're like one of the very few mini bike shops that will set up a frame for you custom with live axle okay. combination so that's kind of cool and the live axle does ride so much smoother does it it is noticeably different oh, okay yeah. so definitely good for for um long distance rides yeah because i noticed when i was in la uh a lot of the guys were running just your standard axle five five inch yeah bearing. yeah exactly. five inch wheel with a real bearing yeah. yes i mean as far as for drag racing no it, it, it's a very good riding bike for being kind of short yeah stubby you know so your ride out bike it really wasn't gonna be that it was kind of more my like demo bike from people come over they're like oh look at this like cool like live axle hydraulic big tire yeah and it looks really cool right and then yeah. i just kind of started riding it i just the more i've ridden it the more i've like fallen in love with actually riding it and then, like i ride it everywhere oh so it's highway gear then like it's got a 40 tooth in the rear and a 14. But with that short tire, though, yep. so it's still like um, totally highway geared, right? Yeah, I yeah mean, it, it, it's. I, I've tried a. I tried a different hub assembly. That's one of the old Azus Engineering Mark V very hubs on the back. Okay. That you can move back and forth really easily. It uses a wedge design here for the center hub, and that's how this and this are basically sandwiched together, and it clamps the axle shaft or the the axle shaft really tight. Um, I had a different arrangement on it with a smaller sprocket, and it just took a little too much of the acceleration off. So okay. that's like to me the best compromise I could find for doing dis long distance riding. It yeah. still accelerates pretty good. Okay, yeah, so you still have some acceleration there. Yeah, yes, I've not. tried. That's a forty tooth. I've tried running a thirty five tooth, and that was just, just too much. It was just a little too much. Uh, yeah, especially if you're. Like hilly areas, like riding around here would be terrible. If other oh guys. yeah, I guess like in LA, it'd be better with more flat out there, huh? And if you're gonna... dead flat out there. Yeah, so then you're okay. But out here, yeah, it would kind of suck. It would be terrible. Hey, can you start it? Yeah. What cam is this? A 275? Uh... 275. It's 230 and 50 on a 104 lobe separation. Okay. The 104 lobe separation gives it that like brutal like mid range torque. Yeah. Really like so it's that. a really good torque cam. Yeah. Uh, Tim Iskandari, the grinder of the cam, he claims that that is his most torquey cam shot. Okay. specialize in primarily doing engine builds from governor deletes to full billet part installs ported heads race bike motors go-kart motors all that stuff definitely a sweet bike so now i'll see if i can get that green bike running i already found a couple potential problems with that bike for one it's got a giant hole in the fuel line right here i mean so that possibly could be why it's not running right i mean maybe i'm not sure and then the wire off the coil for the kill switch which is bare in some spots, is just sitting down in here. So I think I'll fix those problems and then go from there. Do a filter on here. All right, I got the fuel line hooked up. 
Now I think I throw some shrink wrap over this bare part on this wire. So at least now the wire's not gonna ground out on the uh, on the block. Pull this blower housing off here and uh, run that wire up to the front of the engine. No cooling fins. I'm gonna have to pop those on there too. But this thing runs nice and hot with no fins. And I better check that coil gap too. The coil looks like it's actually touching the, uh, the flywheel. So let me set this coil gap here from zero to maybe like 30 or something. So now I can see a little bit of air gap between there. That looks better. Oh, this nut off of here. Throw some fins back on here. So I got the flywheel torqued down and I got the uh, coil gap set and then I got the, the uh, kill switch wire ran to the front. So I think we're okay now, hopefully. So before I try to take this thing out, I think I'm gonna zip tie this throttle cable. It's just kind of hanging here. So at least it's not flopping around on there. I think I got her all together. So I'll go ahead and fire it up and see what happens. And hopefully it runs good enough where I can test it out. Topped out at 48.63. So I think I'm gonna swap out that carb, that 28 millimeter carb for a VM22, because it's just a stock Predator 212, because I have jets and stuff for the VM22, and it actually has an air filter. So I think it should definitely top out faster than 48 with that tiny sprocket on the back. So 48 miles an hour. So I think I'm gonna use this, uh, have a brand new VM22 with the air filter. So I think I'll throw this on there and we'll see what happens. I would leave this on here and just jet the uh, the main smaller because it was jetted for a uh, fully modded 212. So if I had the jets, I would just jet this smaller, but I don't have the jet and I don't have the uh, air filter. So I might as well just swap out the carb for something that I do have jets for. I just have a 95 main jet, so I'll swap that out. I think I have a 115, maybe a 110, we'll see. Pull this carb off of here. Go ahead and pull off this uh, manifold here. All right. Put the VM22 on there. Slide. Make sure we got full throttle here. Yep. So the cool thing about the slide carbs, they're easy to swap out, no throttle linkage. So now I'll throw a fuel line on here and an air filter. Get the air filter on there. So I think that's about it. So let me just go test it out. It feels more snappy with this carb. Yeah, 
Yeah, it feels like it's valve spring limited. Like it'll rev up to a certain point and then it'll stop. So the bike runs a lot better with the VM22, definitely a lot more snappy, but you can tell it's valve spring limited where it only revs to a certain point. I did a video a while back where I added springs to a stock Hemi. It made a big difference. It gained like eight miles per hour or something like that. So it definitely needs valve springs and a kill switch. 